Right, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast, day after the election, November 9th, 2022. You probably want to stick around for a review of the daily trades that feature over 40 R traded in a standard way with the cryptos. Uh, Wojcik is really hitting his stride. Uh, quick look at uh, the 30-minute chart, which is a perfect hybrid between daily charts for swing trading and three-minute charts for day trading. That 30-minute gives you a insight into both of those dimensions. So here's the 10-day look-back period. And here's the five-day look-back period. And here's the one-day the one day look, five day in the blue box, and then 10 day in the black box. And each of those blue circles represents an important location that we want to attend to. Uh, the five and 10 day low here is crucial because if we get a breakdown out of today's close, then that's certainly within play. Uh, and then the essentially caught a two support level here at the collapsing dragon that's another intermediate price target so that'd be target one and target two and then if this breaks uh look out below um yesterday's price action featured uh a break a rollover and breakdown with an r10 wiggle here that breakdown of the pcr flip so that was crucial and then today's price action which broke south of that momentarily hesitated and then continued that's decisive and that was a resistance or a support level that broke which was equivalent to the resistance level which broke which gave you that leg you know so leg one leg two there's leg one here's leg two and now we're looking at potentially leg three Today's support equated to the previous resistance. So you see there's a real symmetry here. Uh, even if you look back further, this resistance level was this resistance level. And that's why this price level would be so decisive. So you can observe a lot just by watching. If we look at this now on a daily chart, uh, we can feel how we just got an R10 wiggle today in a PSR flip and look out below. And that would take this all the way down to uh, 358, which is that double bottom support level, the feet of the dragon. Those are his little claws. There's his long snaky neck and there's his jaws ready to bite. And that's what today was. That the breaking of the PSR. Look out below. On a longer term time frame, the 150 day look back. Now these are still daily charts. Here's our 30 day look with the three 10 day looks. And then this 10-day look has a five-day look, and then that's today. And that's where it price closed. So this was a decisive break. And now the downside you can see, and that's why we would say if that breaks, look out below. Because that's all new territory. And how f low can it go? 300. What's that going to trigger? A bunch more spending. Free money coming. I guess we should always frame it in both directions. So is it possible that it holds support here after a one-day reset and the plunge protection team coming in? Sure. So what's that argument? Well, it's here. And if this can hold somehow and, and curl, well, we don't know that it's real until it breaks above this crucial level, which is the 10-day high and the peak of the RL10. 390 is decisive. All of this is just tactical trade space here. That's tactical up. This is tactical down. It's decisive. 
if it breaks through here. Then Katie bar the door. And then to the upside, this becomes decisive. Now we have price targets all the way up and then 430 for the true optimist out there. Why would you think that could happen? Well, because it happened. That's why I think it could happen. Don't even need to predict. I was predicting and imagining the uh, relief rally. Didn't matter. Today the movement was down, just followed price. So that's how important predicting is. That's how imagine how imagination is more important than prediction. So I, imagination, greater than P, prediction. Don't even need it. What you need is imagination, visualization, creativity, imagining future states and what to do about it. Completely envisioned as we did standard work today. Here are the sectors. And I've sorted this by negative gains, right? Because that was today. Negative gains also, I guess, losses. But I just think of them as negative gains because I'm making money in that direction. So I just uh, making gains. Here's the baseline, the S and P. Uh, very few things better. Lots of things worse. Almost all of the individual companies were worse, like only Microsoft and Texas Instruments were companies that were better than the S&P. So this is all indexes in here that were doing better, but all the individual companies got slaughtered today. Uh, and I think that's because people who own individual stocks are more prone to emotional action, whether you're a trader or whether you're capitulating, and that's where you get the extra volatility from. That's just my hypothesis. Fits the facts. And much like prediction, it doesn't even matter if I'm right, as long as it leads to action. And as long as that action is positive expectancy, we'll be all right. S&P. Minus two percent today. Let's look at the sec. Uh, let's look at the indexes. I should say, uh, treasuries were better at 0.33. Emerging markets were slightly less worse at minus 1.7. Diamonds slightly less worse at minus 1.9. Tech minus 2.3. The Russell minus 2.75. Now sectors that were worse. Uh, lumber, the other lumber at minus 1.7. Finance, materials, Aussie dollar, staples, real estate, Mexico, agriculture, clean energy, or uh, wheat and precious metals, I should say. These are all defensive plays associated with alternate asset classes and, and uh, commodities based. Uh, marijuana and uh, VXX. Now, marijuana is least surprising because there were five states that essentially decriminalized marijuana from this. That's You're not going to see much news on that, but uh, watch MSOS. More good news as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Microsoft and Texas Instruments were the only companies that were better. And now I just want you to notice while we're here... Uh, there's your semiconductors in blue. Texas Instruments was best, only down 1.9. Intel bad, 3.37. NVIDIA, 5.66. So the semiconductors are in play, but if you want to know what's in play, all the metals, minus 6% today. Cliff, U.S. Steel, Alcoa. You don't really need to be a master of all the metals. If you've got three things that reliably move, in a sector that is much more volatile than the market, man, they're so narrowly traded and uh, focused that uh, you're going to get a ton of movement out of them, and that's what you want short term. All right, let's look at the uh, upside. 
uh, the the downside, I should say. So here's the S and P minus two percent. So commercial real estate, blended commodities, and tech, two point six. Now it starts getting really bad. Brazil and uh, discretionary three percent. Biotech three point three. Fangs three point four. Oil, lithium, clean energy, arc genomics, and uranium up to 5%. Um, arc innovation and oil exploration, 6.5%. Tesla, since we're here, minus 7%. Yikes. Ethereum, Bitcoin, Squarespace. 15%, 13%, 8.5%. Might as well talk about Coinbase, 9.5%. Robinhood, 13%. Rivian, 12%. Devon Energy, 7.25%. So that's why I say negative gains. That's just a G going in that direction. Once you change your mind, all things become clear. If you could rotate the up and down just 90 degrees and just say, look, when I'm in a critical state, compound critical state, it's going to go right or left. You know, there's a train coming and it's going to get off the track and go large in either direction. I just don't care which way it goes. And then you get rid of your directional bias. It's the movement out of the critical state that matters. Once you solve the problem of saying, look, the gains or losses, the directionality doesn't matter. It's the magnitude of the move. And the bigger the move, the more signal there's going to be, the less horsing around, because one side is winning and it's going. And they don't want to fight that brute force move. They just get out of the way of that. And they may just be jumping on it so you get both. So the traders reinforce the buyer or seller who's winning. you got to get out of the directional bias, especially in a bear. Holy smokes. If there's one thing we've learned this year, it should be that. Eliminate the directional bias. Your life is so much easier. Sniper trade of the day. Let's take a look at this rascal. This one, Alcoa, I think. Yeah, Alcoa, three minutes. So, here was uh, yesterday's close in the PSAR flip. Gap down. The OR3. So it closes here, briefly rallies, and then breaks through. So I'm short in the usual way, standard risk box. Um, it reversed, and I just got out. Yeah, could I have been at no lose plus dinner for two? Yeah. Could have been better on that. I forgive myself. All right, so this is important. So you've got this, you got this little price action, you know, compressing. The failure to follow through and the failure to fail is information. This little, this is telling you that there's a moment of decision coming. And the urgency of the sell-off is over because the RL10 bottoms out and it crosses the baby dragon. So now we genuinely have a willingness to go in either direction. We notice the peace are coming. We see the price levels of the dragon. We're already in the dragon a little bit. We've got about this much space between the R10 price and the skin of the dragon. So, you know, we're coming into a decision point, approaching the station.
Uh, I just take the piece R, and I'm going to draw my um, standard wrist box. So there's my wrist box. I just bring it down to here, and that's like this. If it breaks above here and certainly above here, then I think it can get to here and here. So those are upside moves. And if we look at that, that's about a one, two. So I'm not going to add a position until it gets above that piece or flip. That's when it becomes interesting. So this whole area to me is just tactical trade, opportunity trade. And my goal is just a get my risk out of here uh, as soon as I can. So if that's my entry, as soon as I can get up to this level and I can lock in that little gain, no lose plus dinner for two, stop me if you've heard this before, then it becomes a science project. That's what I want. You got to be able to see that template every time you see this price action. I, it wouldn't hurt you to replay this and get a screenshot and make that happen. Once you've internalized that, you don't even need to draw those things. Your life is even simpler. So, uh, I consider that an SSC, Supported Spring Crossing. Uh, why? Well, because the criteria is you need a harsh winter. And when you add the gap, that's what you have. You have that harsh winter. And if you take a look at the standard risk box, you have probably one, two, three of those that went that way. That's a third of a range stat. Because remember, the R10, which is one-tenth of a range stat, and the range stat is the maximum reasonable intraday move. So one-tenth of that gives us a working minimum manageable risk box. And if you saw three of those MMRBs, in one direction, including yesterday's close in the gap, you've seen one third of the move, which means that the size of that move, there's still two more. If this breaks down and goes that way, you got two more moves of that size just waiting for you. And so the size of an MMRB is easy because I got seven, I essentially have seven more MMRBs if it goes that way. And I got two to the top, upside, and if that works, I simply find the low of the day, and then I'm going to add a range stat, which is 10 of these boxes. That's the maximum reasonable intraday move. That's why the range stat is a powerful force for good, and the one-tenth of the range stat, or the R10 MMRB, is a nice way to just use geometry and algebra to give you a mathematical edge for framing trades with plenty of margin for safety. You should replay that a hundred times in your head. So, so there's our stop. And with price here already, I wouldn't be offended if you just moved your stop right to here. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd be worried about me being offended, but I appreciate the, the respect. Because that, give, that little wedge right there, most important moment in the trade, the mimit, <laughs> most important moment in the trade, when you have completely removed all of the negative consequences from this trade, from losing money. Now, there's other negative consequences if you mistrade it. Sure. All those things are out there. But if you look at the histogram of all possible trades, you know, wins and losses, and uh, you have strictly 
constructed this minus one R trade to be here, and you say, I'm not ever taking trades greater than one R, you've taken those off the table. When you're able to move the worst case to this side of the zero line, to no lose plus dinner for two, which is about a 0.2 or a 0.3 R win, you've now not only taken all of those negative consequence, you've taken all of these off. And the only thing that's going to happen on your worst day is that you make 100 bucks, And then all the way out to 2R, which is what you're aiming for. So if that's 1 and I have a reasonable effort to get to 2, I mean, that could happen. But any place north of here is tactical trade, and I'm willing to take whatever it gives me, and I'm not going to worry about it because the difference is in getting out well, what if I get out here or get out there? Or get out? It doesn't matter at all in the great big scheme of things because those are fractionals, fractional differences in the noise. It's not until you get above here that we can really start unwinding the big guns and seeing the big possibilities of wins greater than 2R, uh, like Wojcik's uh, 21R win in Solana that's coming up, I promise you. So you got to learn to let that stuff go. Just don't worry about that. Give that to your assistant manager who's just learning how to follow rules. And plus or minus a couple point two or point three don't matter once you've locked in the gains. That's once you've locked in the worst cases you're going to make money. You can afford to just hand that off to the guy who's learning how to time the market and make little adjustments and learn some trader skills inside here where you're going to get paid for learning how to develop some skills. The next time that you got to officially really take notice and get it right in a big way is what happens after 2R. Hey, just follow my brother's rules and add a second position automatically at the 2R battle drill and problem solved, no cognitive load. Go take a look at his work in the sniper. So this tactical space is really your learning laboratory on how to develop skills at raising stops and trying things out and trying to squeeze a little more out of this thing until it becomes significant when you're going to activate the A-team. So let the guys learn. So you decide where to put that trade stop right here. I, I submit you have to at least be here or here. If you just brought this to zero, and then you were that far in the win, and you let that thing go to, to, to a scratch minus the commission. That just hurts. Because that's like getting the splinter when you're in wood shop, and you say, "Now, Doug, on it. Why not I do that? Why not take this little sliver right here and put that in your favor, with no lose plus dinner for two." Just try that and see how it feels to 30 times. Do you know what 30 times 0.2 is? Yes, you do. It's 6R. You could do that 30 times and learn how to improve on a micro basis, or you could keep holding out for perfection uh, to try to get a 6R win. Hey, I'd rather do this. Baby steps. I'm just in a good mood today because we briefed at the Chamber of Commerce and we told them, told them about our Leadership Academy and what we're trying to do. And we got an offer to take over the Youth Achievement Center in town and bring new energy with state funding to it. So I'm in a pretty good mood right now. All right, there it was. So what do we think about this one? Well, here's how I feel. I don't care what I think. Here's what I feel. I feel like I got my no-lose plus dinner for two just like I wanted. And the worst possible outcome that came out of that decision to move to there was I, I got to experience that. I feel like major psychological victory. You know how happy that makes me that I didn't lose one R? Because as soon as I put that trade on, I felt like I was losing one R because obviously it was going to fail. Why did I even go long? So that's how I feel that I'm always dumb, I'm always wrong. So what? Been dumb and wrong before. 
I hope to continue to be dumb and wrong as long as I take the right action to eliminate my risk to capital by locking in no lose plus dinner for two. I'm trainable. It went halfway up the stack. Yeah, could I maybe have been a little better on this? Yeah, I might have tried a one, two, three exit and gotten out there instead of here. And instead of this little wedge, I would have gotten that extra little wedge. That is evidence of intention and skill. How much difference does that make, point one? If you did that 30 times, what's 30 times point one? 3R. Do you want 3R? Then get better at this. But just recognize this is the learning laboratory. Don't sweat it. So now what do I care? What am I looking at here? I'm imagining this is a critical state. Could this go higher? Yeah, where am I interested? If it breaks out higher than the RL10, why? Because it could still go that far in the tactical trade, which is more than 1R compared to my risk box. So I am i don't mind getting out here and then get right back in. So what? W were you going to be perfect? No. Um, could I also be interested in this break here? Why? That's the southern skin of the dragon. I could maybe trade that to here. And then if it breaks, add a position instead of waiting for here. But I could wait for here when I have almost 2R in hand. So compound critical state, anyone? Sure. Now I've imagined what could happen in both scenarios. Hey, what happens if it doesn't do any of that? What if it just goes sideways? Well, so what? If it goes sideways long enough, eventually this will become a sideways quiet channel, which I'm not going to trade until it becomes a Z3 pinch. I need about five or ten bars of not moving in order to get to that level, or I could put the formal structure on there, but it takes about five or ten bars. Uh, or I could get a um, super pinch. To do that, I need more than just the R10. I need those other ones. But if I'm just trading the sniper, I don't even got to sweat that. I can just do it from this screen here. But that's in the advanced swing trading and day trading courses and the hybrid course if you want more. But for right now, the fact that we're in a little wrist box about the size of a MMRB feels pretty good. I'm ready to go either direction. So you got to be able to see those boxes. How could you learn to see those boxes? Draw the boxes. Put them on your chart. Well, why am I taking that exit? Or that entry, I should say. What would we call that one? With a standard risk box here. Here's a high, a lower high. It crossed the dragon. There's a PSAR flip. I think of that as a K2 to the downside. Supported fall crossing. Here's where I'll add a position. Now we got some goodness happening here. The whole market is starting to suck. This was, it couldn't even get through the edge of the dragon. R10 wiggled and broke. That's actually a collapsing dragon right there. I could wait for this one. Probably did. But there's my wrist box. Why? Because that's about one, one and a half to there. I can wait for that. Where should my stop be right now? If you were this far in the wind and you let this go anywhere into losing territory, that would be bad. So don't do that. We're almost ready for that uh, Uwe exit because we've got one, two dots of our PSAR have made it through the initial risk box. Anytime you see that, that's it's working. 
It's trying. It's working hard for the team. It wants to do good. Respect that. Just, you know. Hey, maybe you're just using the PSAR trail. You could do worse. You could take a a box and move it to no to scratch. If you're going to do that, just go to here and lock that in. I like that. That corresponds with the top of the dragon and the peak of the R10. If your stop isn't there, then you're not listening. If you're closer than this, you might as well just exit and take all of it. Because your reasoning is, hey, it reversed here and did that. So why wouldn't, I mean, that's one R. Respect the R. That's, a, that's not a dumb decision. That's a decision. And it's supportable. Who do you got to prove it to? Who are you trying to persuade? Who are you trying to impress? I'm not trying to impress anybody. So you're either here or at the top of the dragon. Or you take it. But don't just scratch this thing. Come on. Here's where the PSR gets its magic. Yeah, it tests this. That the price is noise. The R10, the blue line, is the trader's price, and it stays on the right side of the PSR dot. When that fails to go higher, there's your collapsing dragon. So if what if I got out here though, because I was nervous in the service, or I wanted to lock in that gain, that's a good decision. If you made it, it's a good decision because you had reasons. But you also made that decision to re-enter. Could you re-enter that with two and reconstitute that position with the 1R markets money? Uh, if you're a graduate of the advanced course, you could. I wouldn't be offended. Why? Because this is the high of the day. There is a range stat move waiting at the bottom of this in a bear, and that's one-tenth of the range stat. So this times 10 is how much is waiting on the downside. So if you put a second one on because you made one and then want to get back in after confirmation of that signal, awesome is you. I just stayed in. My stop was here at that second dot. So I add my second position here. As a point of reference, there's your standard risk box. You learn to suffer like that. Learn to suffer. Now, how much of this do you want to give back? We well, don't want to give back any of it. I want to use the Goldilocks exit which is the perfect blend in retrospect of yeah okay well here's a PSR there's a skin of the drag I almost I wouldn't be offended if the R10 got through here and I took that I wouldn't be offended if you took that as an exit right now but there's a one two anything north of this that's a one two three exit right there so maybe you're here at the spine of the dragon or top of the dragon or the PSR pick one doesn't matter hey if this breaks could you add a third position? Sure. Because this is one, two, starting. You're already three R in hand from this one. And then this one is darn near two. You're sitting at about five if this breaks. So you could afford to put a third position on in here. Sure enough, would you call that a collapsing dragon? If you would, you'd be right. Or you'd be calling it what I call it. That felt like it was done. 
and we're getting close to 2 p.m. anyway. 5R. Sniper trade of the day. Learn to suffer. Here's the boys today. Uh, Constantine continues to crush. He's our prop trader, getting paid to with a, to trade other people's money. When that breaks, bam. Beautiful exit in here. Three and a half in Tesla. Let's see what we got here. Oops, Satya. Brand new to the team, working out. First day of practice. Here's the gap in EWZ. Three minutes, one, two, three, exit. R10 rolls over. I love that standard risk. That would be the confirmation. And then he gets paid at the edge of the dragon. Check. Uh, this is where it should have been. I don't think that's late. I think that's fine. But here's the one. Oh, my God. Bare normal. Collapsing dragon, collapsing dragon. Learn to see those patterns. Oh, EWZ. Oh, pretty good for day one. Do you need to know much more than that? No, you do not. Minimum viable product. Minimum trading plan. Minimum viable trading plan. New term. Minimum viable trading plan. We could even call that the MVP, the minimum viable plan. I'm telling you, that's a win. What's my MVP? My most valuable plan <laughs> my most valuable plan is my minimum viable plan. That's an identity in math. MVP equals MVP. Minimum most valuable plan equals minimum viable plan. That's also the most valuable plan. Yeah. Make value from your plan. Okay, I'm getting a little silly now. Here's Tim and Alcoa. Now that he's shifted to individual stocks and finding the movers, look how much more directional these things. Yeah, but that's more volatility. Yeah, the more volatility leads to directionality. Sees the gap down. Crosses the VWAP, gets paid, gets paid, 1.8. Nice. Much less suffering than I did. That was on, I think, the three-minute. Uh, Boeing. Saw the chance. Oh. Oh, that's where we need to be. And then when this breaks, that's your second position. But that's a great exit to get paid. Worth a shot. And then reverses and gets paid. So scratches, but man, this is the one you want right there. You could even take this one, my friend, when the VWAP breaks. Study that one. Microsoft for point two. He got what was there. Uh, I like this one. Good stop and reverse. I think we gave back too much on this, though. I think you're going to want to, when you see that reversal after such an extreme move down and that reverses, I think in the future you're going to take that right there at the edge of the dragon, which is your friend. And that's an extra piece, which is the size of your risk. And then there's a kata two. 
And if you see price action here, where you're long here, and you see this zoom, you feel very good when it takes out the R10, higher low in the Dragon, crosses the VWAP, gets this burst, and then finds resistance where it found resistance, and then starts to roll over. One, two, three, and out right there. And now you make this instead of giving back that where you confirm at the edge. That's where you're going to activate your sniper mindset. Practice with one half of the position and then let your manager take the other half and you get an average exit and no cognitive load because you combine the sniper plus the manager. The aggressive and the conservative. The aggressive intuition the conservative rules-based. That's splitting the difference. Tesla, right by the numbers. Keep taking the shots. He even got paid on the long side on Tesla today. Got paid, gave back a fraction, more than compensated, crushed it. Here's where I think if you were ever going to put two on, it would be there. You could be here and here as legit additionals. So that five could have been 10. It brings home seven for the day. How's that feeling, Tim? Find the mover makes you feel good. You have our permission to keep doing that. Because the more you do that, the more we can learn from your work. Uh, let's see, Nolan. PSAR flip potential, especially when it crosses the VWAP. Here it rolls over. And so if you were long from anywhere in here, you'd want to win. Here's your PSAR flip. Oh. Crush that. Or wait for the R10 wiggle, which can't even get through the dragon. Crush that. There's a consolidation right at the support level. It breaks, crush that, and then take a one, two, three exit here or skin of the dragon there and get all of that. And then all of that money, pick one little wrist box and try this one. When this doesn't work, when you see that and this doesn't work, it started to not work right away. The bar where you got in, it failed immediately. Here's a one, two, three exit on that. Here's where it left the drag. Guess what that is? That's a K2 RLXD to the downside. That is a valid short signal. Hey, a breaking of the lower uh, RL10 is a collapsing dragon. That's a valid short signal. So in a market that's getting smashed, and you've got a long trying to get to the VWAP, and it fails immediately, and you're starting to see signals for high priority, most favorite patterns to go short, you cannot take this as your exit. You've got to internalize those signals, and you cannot stay wrong too long. Hey, the good news is that that lesson cost you one R, which is professional. And when you get short here and you're one R in the win, don't lose money. Get long here. I, don't, I think you didn't get short, but that's where you should be short. Don't lose money. Crushed it. Now, there's your exit. Not here. This is your reentry when this didn't fail further. Like, this should be short because you're below the VWAP. And this, is, this was a bigger move down than that was a bigger move. All that move did was get back to the VWAP and start to reject. On a larger sense, that is a kata two short, and you should be short here, and then when it doesn't work, you're out. And then you reshort that when it doesn't stay north of the VWAP for long, and you get that move. So let's refine our attention. Put your safety goggles on and your magnifying lens, and let's start feeling this price action as it interacts with these indicators. This was a larger one from Satya. 
uh, to show uh, his moves. That's the one we got to get right there. See previous discussion. Why is that so crucial? Because you have a high, a lower high, a second lower high, and when this collapsing direct, you could, I would, I really want you to be short here. But I really want you to be short here. Uh, and here. And here. And here. And here. In a bare normal, I want you to be short on days when the market is failing and when your target is failing faster than the market. I want you to feel how good that feels. Devon Energy, Woj, 2.6. Tesla, 3.8. Hey, that's a good day at work for 6.4. Oh, you're supposed to tell us when you're on break because he didn't even get this part of the move. And he still got 2.7 out of that. You're supposed to tell us. So 6.4 is a good day at work until you say, oh, that's right. Uh, let's get let's get three and a half from XRP. And that's not even re-entering. That's not even re-entering. Why was he not re-entering? Because it was insane, and he was smashing Solana for 22. And that's not 22 on a great big GIF move, but this is measured shots. And that's not even optimized, and that's 22 for a 25.6 R day. You should download that chart from the chat room and study that meticulously. Less beautiful work again in the Oz, in the Kiwi. Sees the rollover, RLXD, wrist box, one, two. He doesn't even wait for the one, two. He respects the R, re-enters, respects the fact that it didn't fail further, gets the PSR flip for 0.5 and brings home 1.7. On you look and say, well, there's not one point. Yeah, there is. There's 1.7 on three winning trades. Well done. Hat tip to the team today. You guys are doing well. You know, I might just turn today into a one-hour trading lesson for perfect your trade and say, people, just learn. If you want more, come find us. I think that's what we're going to do, Bill. Because why not? Did you get my uh, I did. histogram? Because oh, I know. The three days in November? Yeah. Yeah, I briefed that yesterday. Oh, were we in the wrong meeting? Because everybody, we all left because there was no. Well, yeah, that, yeah. yesterday was Tuesday. That's uh, I teach that master's class in corporate finance. Oh, OK, because all Tuesday, the guys. Had... I, reco I recorded it later okay. and, Sorry. and posted it. OK, apology, apology accepted. Sorry about that. Well, OK. I just know that Luis wanted to see the. Uh, Anyway, all right, thanks. Yeah, it's in last night's, I, I think I led with it. Or somewhere in there I made it. We'll make a short out of it. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like I said, we, we've seen worse. Yeah. 50R in three days. With a, two, uh, two to one win rate and a three and a half to one win to loss rate. Yeah. That's That's using... My uh, two R battle because I wanted to see what the differentiation was when I used the two R battle drill. Oh yeah, it's and crazy I, good. I just get better. Yeah, well, you don't even have to think hard. No, with you're you're going over exactly what we did today in our uh, impromptu. It, it could be a mirror image of what you're doing today. Yeah. Uh, hat tip to Damien. 
he's pulling in three to five hour a day, feeling good about it. And he says, what can I do better? I said, well, you're making money and you're keeping your losses under one R. Just keep doing that. Is so asked the question. Is asked the question and don't try to answer it. Yeah. Until it's so obvious that you can't stand it. Yeah. The, the only way to make a change is when you're so disgusted that you haven't made the change yet. Yeah. I like, be... to, I like to use the power of positive disgust. Yeah. So you get tired of making five R, and you want to make six. Why did it? Why did I stop recording that? That was so funny. No. <laughs> okay. Won't. Sorry. Oh. Well, that's just for the thing. Oh, no, it was still going. Okay. I thought I had stopped it. That's funny. So, even great better. job, Damien. Even great better. job, Damien. Yeah. Great job. Well, so proud the, of him. One of the things that I wanted to say to Ken, yeah. uh, if I may, is uh, thank you uh, for all your hard work and all the information that you provided. Um, I really wish that I would have um, joined your program many years ago uh, and not have all the headaches that I had to go through. So thank you. Well, just well, just uh, enjoy the calm. It, the calm just feels that much better, so that's probably worth it. Yes, you it know, is. Uh, just, you know, be grateful, pay it forward, and take, you know, make the world a little better place. That's I, But r thank you very much for that. That'll, you know, sadly, that's going to keep me going for another 20 years, probably. It usually take one one little uh, one plus one makes me go forward for 20 more years. He's like General General Patton. Give him a headline, he's good for another 20 miles. Another 20 miles, yeah. Yeah, he was a great guy, too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but that's beside the point. <laughs> well, for those of you that uh, next time you're in Luxembourg City, um, outside the airport is Patton's grave. And there's about a, uh, a uh, there's a couple thousand Allied soldiers in a World War II memorial cemetery maintained by the nation of Luxembourg. And uh, when you drive up in there, there's a, it's surrounded by evergreen trees. And you can feel how sacred that is is and even though there's a city and an airport right next to it as soon as you walk inside that area uh it's absolutely silent and there's a uh concrete chapel with uh, some fun facts and whatnot about his career in the battle of the bulge and his liberation of europe which the people of luxembourg will never forget and uh the cemetery is laid out in the form of a troop formation with Patton in the position well, like receiving the report as the commander and the guys laid out in a military formation right there in the very simple graves absolutely meticulously maintained and time stopped and you cannot hear a pin drop even though airplanes are flying overhead and traffic is, there's it is absolutely silent and it is one of the most sacred spots um, on on the planet that I've ever been in. And that's what I remember about Patton was how much he loved soldiers and why he was so aggressive and ruthless in war was to make it end so that their sacrifice was not in vain. And that's what I think about, you know, on Veterans Day coming up on November 11th here. I think about all these uh, dog-faced soldiers in the mud uh, in Europe and uh, so yeah but, but you know Ken I I went when my parents were still alive to the cemetery in Ahomage France mm. uh, where all the uh, you know the American soldiers were buried and when my wife and I went there and we walked into the secretary uh, the, the cemetery it was a very cold windy day but like you said, we couldn't hear a drop. But one of the things that I remember is when we were walking on the beach next to the cemetery, I could still feel the rifles and yeah. the guns firing like if I, I was there like 70 years ago. Yeah. And it had a profound effect on me. Um, and it still does. 
you know, all these young men that landed and got killed to be able to allow us to have freedom is something that you can never forget. That's all any soldier ever wants is for people to experience freedom. That's all anybody that has ever served ever really wants. It's, you don't even want thanks or to be even be recognized. Just be free and do something with it. Even if it's just to feel how good freedom feels, that's enough. Um, that's why we serve. Well, you know, you. I mean, that. so that, you know, I, uh, b- before I came to the U.S. in 1985, I, I, I had to serve in the French Army for a year. Mm. So I know what Mary, t- but it is something that I think a lot of young people should go through because it teaches you a lot of things that we don't have in life. And all this, we can go back to the thing because you and I can talk about this for hours. <laughs> yeah, f- freedom isn't free, as we we both know that. It, there's a, it, it takes intention and will and guts and teams and all that. And um, so we'll be thinking about those guys on November 11th for sure. Hey, let me uh, finish up real quick here with the reports. I mean – it's it's the market condition right now more than anything. And the uh, central most important fact, bare normal. Uh, the pullback today made the short terms falling over. The risk Z is telling us large moves in either direction. We've been warned about the weakness and vulnerability of the internationals. Um, uh, Tesla got smashed today. Microsoft was down. Uh, So today's move is not surprising. Just find the movers. The usual suspects are more than sufficient right now. And we should just notice, however, that, you know, in the Dow, that Tesla was down big. Oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong dog on. I was on 12.8. So, so that wasn't right. Stand by. It was supposed to be on 12.9. Hold on. Hold the phone. Yeah, what the president meant to say was, yeah, bare <laughs> normal. Uh, the selling pressure today made it even worse. Uh, Risk Z is still pointing the way to sharp moves in either direction. Um, Tesla, Alcoa, Brazil, big downs, that's what you need to know. McDonald's, one of the few areas of safety. Yeah, that looks more correct. Yeah, the big weakness today, Disney, um, Tesla. Lots of auto framers starting to show up. So the downside targets are there. Uh, in the ETFs, uh, consumer discretionary. Tesla is the single biggest symbol in XLY. It's like 10% of the ETF. That's where that weakness is coming from. Clean energy got hurt today also. Um, the auto framer and the squeezes, I, you know, what's interesting about Tesla is that because there was a, a lot of the moves in the gap, it still actually was relatively pinched. That's the auto framer. And, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the auto framer. And now... Uh, and then in the pinches, there's just a few. McDonald's and Microsoft are still pinched. The S&P was relatively pinched, but 
The Dow was directional. Tesla and Brazil were both uh, directional. So the you know it's knocking on the door for big moves to the downside. That's to be got to be concerned about that. Yeah, uh, in that whole stack, uh, Brazil was the most directional. So I'm expecting more of that tomorrow. Come on, thing. Let's get this working. There we go. Um, sniper land. Lots of Godzilla's beginning to appear. The S and P five hundred, like Disney. So here's what I look for: is I look for things where there's confirmation, like violently moving on both the five and one day volatility, but also AVB has a very quiet day. It makes the the red green makes that the anomaly. But really, here's all you need to see right there. All of those were extraordinary today. Will be so tomorrow. The one day movers, we had some like five sigma uh, ad adverse moves today. Akamai. So these are all that are more than two sigma moves. DHI, a transportation. Disney way up there. Tesla. That's all you need to know. All right, I want to. I'm going to get this published and posted now while we got it. Um, I really appreciate the work you guys are doing. When I see you bringing home the bacon on a surprisingly downside big move today, and you guys finding the movers and getting it done, and committing to learning every day, I tell you, it makes an old fat man feel pretty good. So, I uh, genuinely appreciate what you guys are doing. Keep up the fire, and uh, let's get this thing tomorrow, and then uh, give some thanks for freedom on Friday. Uh, take good care, guys.